Grandpa to get us started. Uh, glad you could join us. I want to open in prayer and give Grandpa time to uh, uh, open the word to us. So, Father, um, we want to open our hearts and our minds, quicken our minds that we could understand your word, our spirits that we could receive from you this morning. Lord, that you would prepare us for our day. Yes, God. And we thank you, Lord God. We ask your anointing over Bob, his Mm-hmm. his words to us in our ears that we could hear what the spirit says to the churches yes, and we give you all the praise in christ's name amen 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 all right okay well thank you pastor well we are now in uh, chapter four we've dealt with the genealogy and we talked a little bit about you know the birth of jesus and then we john the baptist uh, josh talked about yesterday and uh, we come to chapter four to me this is one of the most important chapters in the bible and and because it it tells a little bit about the conflict that's going on between jesus and the god of this world satan i i think that uh, satan found out that jesus is the messiah in at the baptism and so all of a sudden when god spoke then all of a sudden I think Satan began to realize there's something. You know, he's not omniscient, but he's watching. Whoa. Let's begin chapter four. I'm reading from the New American Standard again. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. Uh, the word tempted there is kind of interesting, uh, especially out of uh, um, Mark's uh, gospel. Yeah, the word, it talks about attack, really. You know, it's attempted, but it's the idea that something's going on that that shows there's a whole change taking place. And so it's not as if this is, you know, Jesus was being pushed to do evil. It was that Satan was attacking him, trying to get him to do something that would destroy his relationship with the Father. And verse two, and after he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, he was then became hungry and the tempter came and said to him, if you are, catch this, if you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. And he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And here's an interesting point that um, I'm sure you all know. Uh, when Jesus is attacked by Satan, he uses the word of God to fight against him, to go against him. The word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. So all of a sudden, Satan's giving these different temptations, and Jesus quotes the scripture. So that's good for us to try to do that. Then the devil took him into a high holy city and stood him on the pinnacle of the temple and he said to him, if you are the son of God, once again, the conditional phrase, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down for it is written, he will give your angels, you know, charge concerning you and on their hands, they will bear you up. Here's Satan using the scripture also, lest you strive your foot against a stone. And Jesus said to him, on the other hand, it is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Okay, maybe this is, it's kind of interesting. Why would Satan tempt Jesus this way? And the pinnacle would be the high place in the temple and cast yourself down. I believe that, uh, you know, the children of Israel didn't expect God to send his Messiah as a baby. That's not, that was not in their thinking at all. And so what happens is God came through, as it was said the other day by, by Scott, in a way that was not like any way that they thought, the way that they wanted, they wanted a spectacular show of power. So Satan was tempting Jesus, why don't you go to this high place of the temple, jump your off and land down there and show this is, this is the way they want the Messiah to come. And then Jesus said, no, we're not going to tempt the Lord, our God. Okay, let's go to verse 8. And the devil took him into a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to these, and these things will I give you if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, 
begun saying, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him. And behold, angels came and began to minister to him. Now, this is really interesting because you think, why would Satan do this? And how did he have the power to do this? And I, I think it's, it's, you know, the Bible, Jesus didn't correct him. He says, this is my kingdom. Satan said, all these have been given unto me, not here, but in, in Mark. But it, uh, you know, a different passage, but the same kind of thing. All you have to do, Jesus, is fall down and worship me, and I'll give you everything you've come to earth for. And then what happens is Jesus says, no, you know, we'll worship only the Lord our God. But the thing that uh, maybe kind of amazes us is that how did Satan have this power? And I, I think it's pretty obvious that, uh, that when Adam sinned, you know, Adam was given the authority over all the world, dominion, the scripture, in, in the first part of Genesis. Uh, but all of a sudden, he has been given this kingdom by Satan. I'm um, going to be by, by Adam because Adam abdicated his authority over the world. God's desire was that man would rule on the earth, his creation. So he failed the original sin, we call it, and then all of a sudden, Satan is tempting Jesus in the same way. I'll give you all these things. All you got to do is worship me. And Jesus says, no, I'm not going to do that. But Satan had the authority to do that. But Jesus is coming and he's going to take the kingdoms, all the kingdoms of the world. They'll all bow down and worship him. Okay, now let's go to verse 12. And when he had heard that John had been taken into custody, he withdrew into Galilee. <laughs> And uh, if you uh, travel to Israel, you know, most of us talk about Jerusalem and all this, but most of Jesus's ministry was up in the northern part of the country, in the Galilee area. And you can catch that from the Gospels and, and all those cities in that area. So he withdrew there because Herod was out attacking. And leaving Nazareth, he came and settled in Capernaum, which is by the sea, in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali. They, these are sometimes called the, the 10 cities on that side that where Jesus spent a lot of time. This was to fulfill what was spoken through Isaiah the prophet saying, the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, catch that, beyond the Jordan, in a Galilee of the Gentiles. In other words, all of a sudden right here, Jesus is God, not only of the Jewish people, but of Gentiles, us as well. He's our God. And so God was concerned from the very beginning of his ministry. The people who were, what, sitting in darkness saw great light, which is, comes out of Isaiah. And those who were sitting in the land and the shadow of death upon them, a light dawned. From that time, Jesus began to preach and say, this is, this is what you ought to circle this, this scripture. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, I think, you know, this is what Jesus is one sermon. This is what he preached about all the time. The parables talk about the kingdom of heaven. Now, some may, some may say, well, what's the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven? For me, there's no difference. It's just that Matthew was writing to Jewish people. And just to write the word God, you know, they had to put the pen down you know, and use a new one because it was too sacred. But so they used another word, heaven, in replacement of God. So the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, to me, are the same thing. I know some people don't think so. I think they are. So it's just Matthew who's writing to Jewish people that said that. Okay, let's look at verse 18. And walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, and they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they immediately left their nets and followed him. And going from there, he saw two other brothers, James, uh, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in a boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called them. 
and they immediately left their boat and their father and followed him. Now that's that's really it's an amazing passage, isn't it? Uh oh, did I lose you? No, we're good. Okay, I, I, there's a new software trying to come on. <laughs> Sorry, we're all good. <laughs> you know, they left there. I, I mean, it's just unbelievable the power of Christ. I mean, his words were so powerful. These fishermen just change change jobs. You know, he calls you and he calls me. And it, it's something to follow Christ. And it's it's life. Let's look at verse 23. And Jesus was going about in all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom once again, and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness among them. And the news about him went out into all Syria. Catch that, it's way up north. And they brought to him all who were ill, taken in various diseases and pains, demoniacs, epileptics, paralytics, and he healed them. And a great multitude followed him from Galilee and the Decapolis. Decapolis are those 10 cities on the other side of Jordan. And Jerusalem and Judea from beyond the Jordan. Interesting chapter. <laughs> great chapter. So I'm just saying to me, this is kind of the start of the ministry. This is this is Jesus coming and God is going to fulfill his prophecy. The kingdom of God is going to take over and destroy the kingdom of Satan. Now, it's not going to be done in the way that probably the Israelites thought by a spectacular entrance of some God that was going to just destroy the Romans and destroy Satan. But God was going to do it from a small way so that whosoever will, everybody can join in and be part of this kingdom. So we are part when the kingdom has come, and that's what we get to be part of. You rule and reign with Christ in the kingdom. Okay, that's enough for me. <laughs> any any comments you'd like to make? Let me step in and make a, a few observations here as well. And the first one I want to note, and I want to focus on the temptations. Jesus was alone in the desert, so he had to go back and tell his disciples so they would know what happened in the desert. Jesus thought it was important enough to teach his disciples that there is a real devil and he wants to come against you. And the main thrust is he wants to put a wedge between your sonship, your daughtership, and the Father God. He wants to forcefully tempt you away from God. And so Jesus just didn't, this didn't just happen to Jesus. The Spirit of God led him into this situation. The devil took advantage of it, but God sent Jesus through the Spirit into the desert, knowing Jesus could handle the devil. And we go, God sends us into the fight, but he knows we can handle the fight, and we need to handle the fight. We need to know that the enemy wants to put a wedge between us and our Father God. I think it's really interesting that Jesus quoted, all three of these quotes are from Deuteronomy 6 to 8. He quoted the Old Testament when the Israelites were in the desert. In their 40-year experience, he was in his 40-day experience, and he is quoting what God is trying to show us in the Old Testament as well. And so one of the verses that God talks about the Israelites in the desert, why he sent them into the desert, he says in, uh, in Deuteronomy 8, to find out what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commandments. That's why God sent the Israelites in the desert. He wanted to see what was in their hearts. He wanted them to see what was in their hearts, whether they, was gonna, they were going to actually follow God or like Adam, as Bob mentioned, just give up their authority and fall away. But Jesus did not relinquish his authority. He kept his authority because he resisted the devil. He wouldn't let him put a wedge between him and the Father. And at the end of this book of Matthew, Jesus like, like grinds it in Satan's face. He says, all authority has been given to me. That's the closing part of this. The opening part of his ministry is that he's tempted where the devil's trying to say, bow down to me. 
And in other words, give the authority to me like Adam did. But Jesus at the end says, all authority has been given to me. So I just, I just love Jesus. And I love the fact that we have Jesus and we can go into the fight today knowing that Satan cannot put a wedge between us and God, that God is with us even in our wilderness experiences, which can be confusing sometimes and challenging sometimes, but we do not have to succumb to having a wedge put between us and the Father. He's with us. Uh, uh, and that's, that's my devotion, part of part of that. So, and Josh? Yeah, I just was thinking about the disciples when he called them, he called fishermen, which I, I don't know, I guess it would be like machine shop workers nowadays. I don't know, it was like a really common job. <laughs> it was just all over the place and or I guess you work in like a Walgreens. I don't know. They were a very common job. They were all over the place. They just would catch fish every day, bring it in, sell it, do the same thing over and over again. And he, they're the guys that he called. He called them, four, four fishermen, I think, to come and be the apostles that would change the, the ancient world for God. And so, yeah, I just wanted to think that we're pretty important to God, that where there's no station we have to carry to do cool things for him. It's just, I don't think that matters at all, where we think we should be or who we think we should be or all our things we've done. I don't think that matters when it comes to him. That was just something I saw. It was cool. <laughs> nice. Any any other uh, insights someone would like to bring? Maybe we could take one or two. And if not, we'll go to prayer. All right, Bob, you want to lead us in prayer? Certainly. And then I'll close Father, us. Father, we are, are so grateful that uh, you give us this word, and this word is alive. Jesus used it to destroy the attacks of Satan. So we thank you that we too can use the word and, and yes. we believe it, we trust in it. We thank you, Lord, that when you came, you also brought healing. You helped the crowds and ministered to people. And as Josh just said, you, you touched common people and transformed them into the apostles of the Lord. Now we ask that you bless all these people today that are listening. And not just now, but through the day, may our hearts and our minds begin to yes, think God. on these things. Yes, Lord. Yes, think Lord. about the power of Christ to destroy Satan. Yes, and Lord. think about the kingdom that he has and it's coming. It's like it's already, but not yet. It's coming in greater power in the yes. world. So yes. we trust in you. Bless everyone, I pray. And Father, um, we see how uh, Eve in a greedy sense, wanted, wanted more, wanted, wanted what you didn't want for her, Lord God, because you wanted her safe. That Satan had no power except to tempt, and they fell. And we see you raising up Israel because you loved Israel. And in the wilderness, Satan tempted them, and they fell. They were afraid. But we see our great Lord, Jesus, our example, and how he just stood up. He wasn't afraid. He had faith and he believed. Amen. And he, and he won the victory in, that, in those moments, Lord God. And now we are his, Lord. Mm -hmm. And I pray for each one of us that we would stand up when the, when the devil tries to put a wedge between us and you. We would not operate on greed or fear. Yeah. But we would operate in faith and have the confidence to go into the fight, wherever you send us today, whatever challenge we face to love people, whatever it is, Lord God, we know we can be successful as we live by yes, faith, God. as Jesus showed us here. And we thank you for that. In Christ's name, amen. 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 So it's been really good being with all of you today. Um, Josh hosted the meeting. So I think, I think we're all set here. Josh, if we, we let's say goodbye to one another. Adios, y'all. It's God so bless. good to see all of you. God bless you guys. See you tomorrow, if you can make it. God bless you. Now.